Welcome back, watch fans. Another unboxing. I don't know what this is, but we're going to find out together. Um, guessing by the size and the fact that I have um, eight Ingersoll's coming, that this is probably going to be another Ingersoll. So hopefully you're not disappointed. I have kind of gone head over heels for this brand. I know. What can I say? I really like the style. But I promise that I will also start start doing some other non ingersolls but i just have to get this out of my system i'm sure a lot of these will be up for sale uh because i can't keep 20 plus ingersolls that would just be ridiculous but man i mean like who doesn't enjoy opening up boxes like these i mean look at that if you had one of these to open up pretty much every single day wouldn't wouldn't you want to tell the world to look at that the true original ingersoll I could build a fort out of all of these boxes. I have so many of these wooden boxes now. All right, let's see what this is. I have no idea. Looks big. I'm starting to like big watches. Really nice. Oh, man, this thing is heavy. Is Wow. You know what? I'm not even opening up. I want you guys to see how heavy this is. I mean, for a watch, right? Like, I'm not going to lift weights on it. But let's see what's doing here. All right, check this out. Look at that. 143.3 grams. That is like the heaviest watch I think I've ever done. It looks like it's brass. I can't tell. This thing is insane. The Michigan. Oh, this is pretty cool. Okay, all right, all right. Let's 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 see. Very nicely wrapped. I will give it that. This is very nicely wrapped. Oh, oh look at that. Damn. Damn. How can you not like... Look at this. This is insane. <sighs> How can anybody not like this watch? Oh, man. Okay. Let's look at what else comes in here. The Ingersoll plate. Solid two... Two, cent, uh, two millimeters thick of, of pewter. Put that right there. I love that. <clears throat> My lifetime warranty. See, everyone? Lifetime warranty. And I am not a spokesman for Ingersoll, but I, but I should apply to become one. Uh, just going to be honest with you. Man, every watch type is in here. This is great. More silica gel. I'll save that for later. Always enjoy that. All right. Let's watch a quick video about Ingersoll. Uh, I think you'll like it, even if you've seen it before.
All right, let's be honest with ourselves. Who can't like a watch like this? This watch is amazing. This is a solid piece of whatever this is. Um, it doesn't look like seeing the steel. I, I think it might actually be uh, bronze or maybe some sort of anodized stainless steel. Okay, let's let's get right into it. Um, it's got a rose gold coloring. Uh, very nice. So one of the first things you'll notice, I took a look at it. And I was a little bit confused trying to figure out what was going on with this hand because it was uh, seemed like it was misaligned because it wasn't in the zero section. And that's oil. Sorry, I just rebuilt the movement. Um, but that's actually a 24-hour uh, GMT. <clears throat> or not GMT. That's a, that's a 24-hour dial at the three o'clock location, which is really cool because if I engage the chron the chronometer, the chronograph, it uses the uh, the large second hand. And when that sweeps all the way around, it'll stop, start to increment uh, by one minute ticks for uh, an hour. So I thought that was pretty cool. I'll leave that going. Um, really nice. Of course, it resets when I do that. Has a hacking feature. Notice that the uh, second hand has stopped moving. But as this moves, it moves the, uh, the 24 hour hand also, which is great. I'm going to move this out of the way. So this is actually a really great watch. Um, I'm gonna to have to open this up and figure out what the movement's in it. It's uh, It's got four screws, which is a little bit interesting. I had not seen that, so it's obviously not a screw off, but I should both get that off. Um, let's just take a quick look at it. Since we're looking at the back, stainless steel, 316 stainless steel, really nice. Uh, five atmospheres, so that's 50 meters water resistance. You can see that right there. 5 ATM water resistant, so it's 5 bar. Uh, I'll put a chart right up at the top. That means you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can go swimming, you can wash your hands, uh, do the dishes, jump in the in muddy puddles, as the British people say, whatever it is. Um, but I wouldn't go snorkeling in it. I don't know that you want to go snorkeling in the leather uh, with a watch band, anyways. Uh, the watch band is kind of nice. It's it's sort of their no frills watch band. You know they've got the the really, really high-end leather straps by Horween, which is an American company that's been operating for over 100 years. Uh, and then they have the thicker watch bands. This seems to be just pretty much their standard fare, which is still really nice. This is pretty much what you would expect from a, a Wenger. Uh, really nice. Uh, and this is also the standard for an Ingersoll. Uh, let me get this little sucker off because I intend to wear this thing as soon as I'm done. Of course, deployment clasp, uh, it seems like that's Ingersoll's trademark, <laughs> pretty much. They all use uh, deployment clasps. Um, okay, let's get some measurements. You guys you guys already had the, uh, already saw the size. So let's start measuring the size of this, uh, you know, the weight, sorry. So let's measure the case. 45 millimeters. The lug is about, is this a 23? Sure is 23, possibly 24. How can I get a better measurement? Oh, that is crazy. He has a 24 millimeter lug. 24 millimeter lug and thickness 15.3. So this is a beast of a watch. This is not a small watch. Um, all right, let's take a look at the movement, see what's in here. And then I'll close this out. The Ingersoll Michigan Chronograph uses the OS-20 No Jewel Tuning Fork Quartz Movement by Citizen Miyota. This is a high quality movement designed specifically to support a standard one hour chronograph with 24 hour subdial complication. Miyota is a Japanese movement manufacturer that is part of the Citizen Group of companies. The Citizen Group's movement brand, which was launched in 1959, now produces some 100 million calibers per year in its various factories. Most of them are quartz calibers. The Citizen Group is highly integrated since it's also a major player in the manufacture of machine tools and CNC's, which it supplies internationally. Even the oil used in the machines is a homemade product. 
This integration allows Citizen Group to support the highest standard of quality, able to quickly detect problems and defects on assembly lines. At regular intervals, an alarm sounds and components are discarded down a separate track. The OS-20 is a typical three-hand caliber with date of month at the 4.30 location and a sub-second at the 6 o'clock location. Chronograph timer utilizes the large second hand with a 60-minute counter at the 9 o'clock location. The most prominent feature of the watch is the presence of the 24-hour sub-dial indicator at the 3 o'clock location, which is directly tied to the current watch time. The OS-20 uses the SR927W silver oxide battery and supports a hacking feature for extended battery life. Typical battery life is estimated at approximately five years fully engaged with up to 10 years with hacking feature enabled. Accuracy of the movement is quite good, maintaining plus or minus 20 seconds per month at normal operating ambient temperature range. All right, so now you guys know that this has the Miyota OS 20 movement in it, which is a rock solid, reliable Japanese movement. It is the Toyota Camry uh, engine of movements. Uh, it'll outlast probably the case and the watch strap and everything else. Uh, what else can I say about this watch? Okay, it has a three layer coated mineral crystal. It is coated with sapphire. So it is actually a, uh, it is far more resistant than a normal mineral crystal. And uh, have not forgotten, somebody had requested that I do a comparison between standard mineral crystal, well, acrylic mineral crystal, uh, sapphire coated mineral crystal, and uh, sapphire. So the biggest problem is whether or not I want to destroy a piece of sapphire. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's my problem. Um, but maybe I can't, so, and that would be a good thing, and that would show the, but you can definitely see the coloration here as I shift between the LED lights that there's the, the two multicolor that's uh, typically indicative of some, some coating <clears throat> of um, sapphire. So got the watch back together. It's very nice. Um, it's a compression fit uh, using the screws, uh, and they were solid in there. And I will say that they also had um, some weather, not, not what's it called, some uh, watertight uh, sealer, sort of a thread lock. Uh, it's for anyone who's ever replaced a water pump on a car, you would know uh, it is the exact same stuff and that's what I used when I reinstalled these screws. I also cleaned the crystal. Uh, very common for brand new watches that have sat on the shelf for a little bit. They get sort of a haze on the inside. You can probably see that this is clearer than it was in the previous images. Um, if I can, I'll put a picture up of, uh, let me get this light off. <clears throat> I'll do a comparison, we can kind of see. So tell me if the one on the left is clearer than the one on the right. We'll be able to tell, I can see in the video. All right, uh, that's all I got. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, please leave comments below. Uh, this is a really nice watch. I think I'm gonna wear it today, but I may not keep it. So this one may be, God, that is a gorgeous watch, look at that. I don't know. I may keep this one. Damn it. All right. Well, if you like this video, click like. Uh, if you didn't, also click like. Um, get your friends to click like. And please subscribe. Helps me out a bunch. Thank you very much.